Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and everybody else in between, good evening and welcome back to Predicting Tranquility, the show where all of your predictions have been just like my life in the past couple weeks. A total mess. My name is Bowsy, and I'm here, your host for tonight. As always, I'm joined by my wonderful two co-hosts. First off, straight off of a two-long, hour-long Iris podcast, it's Mr. Davino with his dominoes in the background as well. Hey, man, I need I need some sustenance. Listen, I'm not complaining. I like Domino's. It's it's good. And also, anyone that says it's two days old is just wrong. By the way, uh, as well, making his predicting tranquility debut this season is Apathy. How are you doing today, Apathy? I'm pretty good. I just watched Interstellar, which was somehow shorter than the podcast. Hey, so. hey, hey, hey! The disrespect is real. <laughs> disrespect. I mean, what do you what do you know about disrespect here? But still, we're gonna get started here. Obviously, it is very late. We apologize for that. The Iris podcast is definitely te- go on for a little bit, especially when it comes to the end of season. But speaking of that, end of season, it's the last week of the regular season, which means it's gonna be a lot of different me- a lot of different mess throughout all these sort of standings. It's gonna be interesting to see how these matches play out as we get started here with the first group of the EU Harmony tier. Navino, as you're eating that pizza, take it away. I gotta find the right slide. It's the first image in the in the folder I said. It didn't oh it didn't open it like that. Anyway, um okay. First match is Apollo versus Feeders United. I have a, Bowsy's 4-0. I have a 3-1. Apathy also has a 3-1. I think Feeders United is just too good to like not take a map. The next we got Venice Vipers versus Paid to Win. We all have Paid to Win winning. All of us uh, the exact same score, three one. Uh, again, it's one of those things where it's like I think Venice Vipers too good to take to not take a map, but I do not think they get the win over pay to win. <laughs> yeah, Venice Vipers isn't a terrible team by any means. I can see them taking a map off of the pay to win, but it's interesting. The thing about EU this week is that every single match happening this week is a rematch of stage one matchup which is very strange, but that's just unfortunately how our sort of bracket played into that sort of uh, mess with only 12 teams and three brackets. We had to sort it out in that way. So it's going to be interesting to see how these teams go out here. And now we're going to be heading over to our second group here in EU Harmony, moving right along here. Apathy, you have a little bit of an easy group, uh, especially with EU Harmony Group B. Take it away. Uh, So I, we got first off Thunderbolt Voidwind versus Aesir. And this is going to be a, I think, a, a very close match. I've got it 3-2. I'm, I'm taking Thunderbolt for the upset. Um, but I definitely think Aesir is the, the more logical choice. And we see Navino and Bowsy going with Aesir to win. Uh, and then, was this match canceled? So, the second match in this, Snubble Gold versus Hellhounds. According to research, Snubble Gold apparently have, in Pokemon logic, fainted, had no revives on hand, and had to run to a Pokemon center. Gotcha. In other words, they have forfeited from the tournament. This oh, match so has already been... Fo- yeah, they dropped out of a tournament. Well, this match has already been forfeited. 3-1 Hellhounds. <laughs> You've already gotten one point, my friend. But no, this match was not included on the Predicting Tranquility form because Snubblegold ended up dropping out of a tournament. So Hellhounds gets a free win this week. It also plays a lot when it comes to our elimination pool, but still going to be interesting to see this group B matchup Thunderbolt rewind versus ACE here. ACE has been an inconsistent beast and I feel like they're starting to finally hit that stride. Now they're going up against Thunderbolt rewind, who I believe they lost to in stage one, but I could be wrong about that. I think that. it was like a three, two or something like that. It was a three, two score. I just don't remember yeah. who won. I'm pretty sure it was Thunderbolt to be honest. Yeah, I think Thunderbolt did. I yeah, think ACE Thund- got bumped up because of like some of the drop and stuff from what right. I remember. Yeah, so it's going to be interesting to see how Thunderbolt and Aesir go of, if Thunderbolt can get their revenge on that. But now heading over to the EU Harmony Elimination. And also, here's the interesting thing. With Snubblegold dropping out, the Elimination Bracket now makes it so three teams from this group, according to Tranquility staff, still trying to work this out, three teams from this group are going to be moving up, meaning one team is going to be eliminated. And that one team getting eliminated determines on this first match. EU Scrimbucks versus Frequency. If EU Scrimbucks take a map or draw a map, then frequency are eliminated. So we all have EU Scrimbucks winning, and Navino is giving a map over to frequency uh, because it's the final week of the regular season. You might see those pity maps fly here and there. And our second matchup of EU Harmony Elimination Group and our final of EU Harmony is the more interesting one. A10 Esports versus Orthus. 
a rematch feature rematch. This was the first feature match of the EU Harmony tier this season. Now they're going up it again in a feature rematch. Me and Navino have a 3-2 victory for A10 Esport, but Apathy is thinking a 3-1 victory for A10. A10 definitely have woken up after getting that win over EU Scrum Bucks last week. They are a threat now. Mm -hmm. No. I almost wonder about this first match now if, like, um, I feel like given the stakes that, like, EU might just play some more for fun stuff since they already played a lot of, like, Genshi Widowmaker not necessarily the most consistent comps. I wonder if they'll pull out something even weirder after they've won this first map and we could see it being like 3-2 Scrimbucks or even... I just don't see 3-1 one, three one for frequency enough. even. Yeah, Scrimbucks trolls hard enough. I think, like, I don't even want to say it's a pity map. Like, I think frequency, like, has improved week over week. And mm -hmm. Scrimbucks have looked rough since their their bump. You know, they went 1-1. One and one. Um... They got my preds. My preds were wrong. Yeah, Sadness. All of ours were. <laughs> uh, so I could see them actually taking a map. I don't want to count frequency out, but this is Scrim Bucks game play still. Yeah, it's yeah. going to be interesting to see. Scrim Bucks and frequency obviously did play in the regular season. They were, it was a 4 0 win for Scrim Bucks, but it's going to be interesting to see how they go at it. But that is it for our EU Harmony group. Now we're going to be moving over back across the pond over to Harmony NA. Navino, take it away with Harmony Aurum A. Obviously, the slide is not working to his favor. Yeah, yeah and I did not. Okay. Uh, of course, you mean the Koala group. Um, <laughs> first game is Qual Kings for Luminous Foxes. Bowsy and Apathy are haters and have Luminous winning. And I have my boys winning three to two. Close game. I think it's gonna be a close game regardless. And obviously, mm -hmm. I, I, if you pick against your team, like, I, I can never done it before. Don't worry about it. Yeah, well, I know about it. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I also love how uh, Doodles versus Frost up in the next matchup. Everyone, uh, we have, you know, a note <laughs> from. From Bowsy, because you know, I said a 4 0 in favor of Doodles, uh, and then Apathy said a 4 0 in favor of Frost Nova. Yeah, uh, I, you know, I'm kind of curious how, how, do you, how do you see that one? Uh, I'm banking that Doodles will forfeit again. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I respect it. That's yeah, fair. Uh, okay, just, yeah, <laughs> let, let, yeah, let me let me do my explanation on this. I know why you put nope. I mean, that makes sense. I hate, I I mean, I hate Doodles right now with a passion because this has been the hardest team to predict, period, period. I cannot predict this team right, no matter what I do. And every every time I get them wrong, I'm like, how did you mess this up? How did you beat out the expectations? Why did you do this? And I literally see people in chat. Predict, one person in chat was like, I want to see what Bowsy predicts for our Doodles match so I can see if we have to try or not. Well, you're not getting my prediction, and I'm not predicting this match. I am done predicting a Doodles match. For all I know, it could be even better if I don't predict the Doodles match. Well, Bowsy, just like a bracketology next week, is just going to ignore that, that. He's just going to take him off the bracket. He's like, nope. no. No, when, when it comes to Doodles on the bracket, I'm just going to start rolling dice at that point for any, every Doodles match. Pulling a Yet bard? he's going to be mad at me. but Pulling a bar, I don't know. Only for Doodles matches, though, because Doodles, Doodles, literally, that is how you are supposed to predict the Doodles match. Yeah, they I literally mean... can be they literally can be so inconsistent at times. If Doodles win this championship, I'm throwing myself out the window <laughs> of a first floor, of a first story building. Let's let's make that clear first. But, <laughs> but yeah, I I give up on Doodles. But yeah, I think Luminous Foxes versus Koala Kings will be a very intense matchup. I'm excited to see how Luminous Foxes rebound from that, and also if Koala Kings can really bring it home and get that undefeated stage number two but that's going to do it here for na harmony rma now moving on to rmb apathy take it away all right our first matchup is chrysalis versus frost bloom i think frost bloom uh hitting their stride at just the right time so bowsy and i got four o's for them novino giving a map to chrysalis uh i could definitely see that but you know four owing jersey boys was such a statement that um Kind of, I'm kind of just giving it to them based off of that accomplishment last week. Like that, they earned it, you know. Uh, and then the match after that, we've got the Gehenna Gatekeepers versus the Jersey Boys. Bowsy giving it a 4-0, and Navino and I this time in agreement with the 3-1 uh, for Jersey Boys. Yeah, Frostbloom 
again, destroying all of our predictions last week by mm-hmm. sweeping the Jersey Boys, not even just beating them, sweeping them. And I think that really hits a statement on how good Frostbloom are doing. Chrysalis are going to be difficult, and the Vino has advocated for how like Chrysalis are kind of rough, and Pepper's the only, like Pepper is being the carry on that team right now in the Vino's eyes. But it's going to be interesting. CCW and CTW. CCW, yeah, CCW is also very good. Pepper and CCW, I think, are really good, but I don't think it's enough to bring Chrysalis over that line here. It's going to be interesting. This could be heavy, heavy playoff implications here for this matchup. So we'll have to see how well they do. But now heading over to the Indigo side of things, starting off with our first match, which is Strix versus Big Bang Buccaneers. Interesting match because obviously Big Bang Buccaneers defeating the Galactic Penguins last week, the most underrated team in all of Harmony tier, uh, <laughs> defeating them heavily impacted these sort of standings. I have a 3-2 victory for Strix, while Novino has a 3-1 to victory for the Bucks, and Apathy thinks a full sweep in totally unbiased fashion. Right, Apathy? I mean, we said we got to predict our own teams. Fair enough. And also, I mean, to be fair, Strix was also one of my own teams, but also with Big mm-hmm. Bang. Yeah, We don't talk about it. Our second match and our final match in Indigo A is Amateur Professionals versus Galactic Penguins. Navino thinks Galactic Penguins will rebound this week, getting a 3-1 to victory. I think it's going to be a 3-1 to victory in favor of Amateur Professionals. And Apathy thinks the same, except it's going to a map 5. I think the biggest influencer here, Apathy, and I think, I think this is probably why you chose it, Galactic Penguins recently made a roster change. Yeah, it was a little bit more than that. I think... Um... Last week on the feature, I got to cast amateur professionals, and you know I can't read their minds, and I'm not in their team chats. I just kind of got that vibe that they were like throwing for content, um, and they came out and eventually threw hard enough that they actually won a map versus Strix, which was incredibly confusing because uh, they put their main tank on Farah on Junkertown. Um, but I just feel like, you know, maybe they'll rein in that trolling a little bit here and Galactic are coming off of a tough loss and losing a player. Um, and I think that losing that player might be, you know, helping them bounce back mentally. But uh, I just I just feel like AP might uh, turn on the burners here. Kenobi actually in chat is saying that Trek used to be the DPS player for amateur professionals. So probably just was flexing over to that, playing a little bit on that. But it's going to be interesting to see how amateur professionals do here. I just don't, I don't, really, I don't really have faith in amateur professionals based on what I've seen. Mm-hmm. Uh, Strix was an easily winnable game. And they just didn't. And yes, they could be throwing for content, but like Doodles plays weird stuff too and they win. So Doodle, like, Doodles is literally the chunk of hunters of harmony tier and they take down top dogs. So, so do- yeah, that's how I feel about it. It's like, I just don't have the faith in them based on what I've seen. So I think and GP has been a proven talent that yeah, they lost to big bang, but like their two losses are to Jersey boys and big bang this season. They four yeah. doodles. They, they're, they're usually a pretty solid team and they beat Strix without even uh widow main there. Yeah. So. And their loss to Jersey was also in a map five. So yeah. worth noting, Big Bang Buccaneers was the first time that Galactic Penguins has lost in a non-Map 5 situation. So definitely going to be interesting to see how well Galactic Penguins do this week, if they're going to be able to rebound. Now heading over to NA Harmony, Indigo B, Navino, take it away. First, we got Nemesis for five breathing rubber duckies. We all have five breathing rubber duckies winning three to one. I think Nemesis has talent, but five breathing rubber duckies is hitting their stride, and they're really like an A-tier team and a B in the B group, you know? Mm-hmm um kind of just like a dog eat dog world type thing in stage one for them uh and so if this is their game to lose then geo you know uh i i feel like squall is just kind of the odd one out here um and geo should win this game uh pretty convincingly unless they really drop like spill their spaghetti which is possible because geo is scuffed but i do not see them dropping it that badly Listen, Geo destroyed my predictions last week after getting killed by FBRD. Yeah, yeah, they got 4 by FBRD. And I was literally like screaming into my pillow, why, Geo? Why must you do this? <laughs> I mean, they can still, must... still take the four seed by uh, winning against Wall because they beat Nemesis week one. 
That's true. They yep. they did beat Nemesis in a map five situation, so they definitely can take that. But yeah, definitely a little boring tier here, but these matches are definitely predictable. I am going to stand by you. Fiber and Rubber Duckies have definitely looked into Waken now after that stage number one. Obviously, mm-hmm. two big losses in stage number one, two big bang Buccaneers and Luminous Foxes. They finally started to wake up, and I think they're starting to really hit their stride here at the right moment. But now it's over to the NA Harmony Elimination Group. Apathy, take it away, my friend. Right, the first half of the elimination group, we've got a uh, shake and bake versus turbo throwers. No shot, you said that. Um, oh wait, I'm looking at chat. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <laughs> that's a whole that's a whole other thing. Uh, um, sorry, keep going, keep going. My bad. <laughs> yeah, I think we. I think the logo is wrong. Yeah, sure it is. I yeah, okay. I'm fixing that right now. No worries. Don't talk about sure. don't talk about it in chat. It happens. Welcome to, to production sure. land. Don't talk about Bruno. I haven't seen that yeah. movie. Uh, I've got Turbo Throwers along with Navino. Uh, Navino and Bowsy putting it to a map five. Bowsy having Shake and Bake taking it. But I think Turbo Throwers have looked really, really good since their rebuild. Uh, I always like watching Junkrat, so I, I went with them. On the uh, other match for Elim Pool, we've got Fahrenheit 972. Yep. Uh, versus Wildfire, so two blue fiery teams but um i've got wildfire taking the upset whereas both of you guys have uh fahrenheit winning you it. draw a draw yeah mm-hmm. i Why i not? can see that if you're gonna throw a draw in anywhere this week this might this is a good one to do it there do it there for mm-hmm. uh i just i just think wildfire have a chance at taking this one um but obviously i think f972 is the favorite i just wanted to throw a curveball in there and you also have the two other NA Harmony elimination matches. Mm-hmm. The uh, first one of those is going to be 3.5 versus Boop, I believe. Does this one still have playoff implications? Yes, because both of these yes. are one and one. Yeah. So the winner of this, I think, makes playoffs, and the loser might be out. I, d- yep. I don't know the exact tie breaks. That should be how uh, I've got 3.5 winning. I think Boop has been struggling a lot this season. They've only beat, like, steam so far and i think they've gotten four out of that was like a map five time wasn't that map five no it was it was uh it was in four maps i I think it was three one then because i remember they lost a map when i looked it was a excuse me a second do you write them all down yes it's a it was a three to one for boot Hmm. what's the point of your spreadsheet yeah i think that's just let everyone else see it Some people writing helps them learn better. I am not one of those people. Same, mm-hmm. same. But yeah, I think Boop's just been having a rough season. I think 3.5 is more uh, invested in trying to cl- close out this season and, and get into that final chance in the playoffs there. And then lastly, we have Fighting Potatoes versus Steam. Unfortunately, neither of these teams would be able to qualify for playoffs even if they won um but i've got i think we've all all three of us have got fighting potatoes taking it but novino giving it a close match whereas i've got it for uh, a pretty dominant I don't know fighting how to, potatoes i don't know how to predict fighting potatoes anymore they beat chrysalis 4-0 and they don't win a game in the elam pool mm-hmm. like i don't know anymore i listen i've <laughs> scrimmed this team and i don't know how to predict them anymore i don't know either you know they they did like okay Vela, Vela is cracked on the tracer mm-hmm. like it's uh it's just I, I don't know what's happening to them but i i just said three two because i didn't want to yeah it's just i think because... i think they can end out this season on a w though yeah i think they'll win yeah i just yeah. don't know sometimes that's what matters steam yeah. are difficult to predict as well like steam is before stage number one they had the most draws of any team this season or before stage number one like stage number two began they had the most draws of any team this season they were a hard one to predict <laughs> and yeah like they lose to boop which was kind of unexpected in my book, but still, Steam has been hard to predict, and it's going to be interesting to see how Fighting Potatoes are able to bring themselves into this uh, with the Elim, if they're going to be able to end on that high note or not. But that's going to do it here for NA Harmony Elimination. Keep in mind, obviously, 3.5 versus Boop and Fahrenheit versus Wildfire are the matches to watch. Those are the playoff implications. Whoever wins those matches is going on to the playoffs. But now we're heading over to the Discord tier. 
And we're going to start off with Discord RMA, with our first match being Valkyrie versus Cosmic Castaways. Everybody on the desk predicting the Cosmic Castaways to fully sweep Valkyrie. And then our second and final match of Discord RMA is Seal Team Spuds versus Redacted. We all think it's going to a map five. Navito and Apathy think it's the Spuds are going to win, while I am giving a little credit to Redacted to get their second win of stage number two. But I think this is going to be an interesting match. The other one, probably not so much, but it's going to be interesting to see if Redacted or Seal Team Spuds comes out with the win. The real question is, Valkyrie you're going to have six players. Um. That's, another, <laughs> that's another big question that we need to take into consideration. There's a chance I might play main support at the end of that match, so you might want to change it to a 3-1. I haven't I, submitted you know, my form yet, I, so I, I, I might. Said this, I said this on the podcast. As a main support, all you have to do to actively not throw is live. Mm-hmm. And now, Apathy has trouble. Like, well, I mean, if you just walk into him, like, you know, it's just... I mean, Apathy might have trouble with that. You never know. Why do you think I was rejected from the team? <laughs> anyway, <laughs> moving on to our next bracket, which is NA Discord RMB. Navino, take it away. Bro, I don't get why people are so negative in this chat. Get out of here. Um, RMB. Um, Firefight versus Oath. Right, we're on RMB, right? I, yeah. I got distracted by the, the, yes. the chat. No worries. We are in RMB. Um, I said Firefight versus Oath. I have, I think we all have Firefight winning. Uh, I, Bowser has 3 2. I have a 3 1. Apathy has a 4 0. Uh, I think Oath has proven that they have done well. Like they went like beating Oreo Fleet in map five who Firefight lost to, I'm just not convinced by the consistency of Firefight to give them a 4-0, personally. Mm-hmm. Then Fenrir versus... Uh, versus uh, Oreo sorry, Fenrir versus Oreo Fleet. I have Oreo Fleet winning. Both of you guys have Fenrir. I, I know Oreo Fleet hasn't been as consistent since stage one, but Fenrir ran like ball six man, and I just can't get that out of my mind. They ran <laughs> ball six man versus Firefight. And I don't know how to feel about it. I'm a I'm a posit you this. I think Oreo Fleet is the doodles of Discord tier. They started. They running actually kind of look like stuff. a similar. They started. Yeah, not like in terms of their stuff. comps, just yeah. in terms of like the hitter. How good they are. Yeah. Yeah. So that's yeah. why I'm not taking like. Obviously, the Oath win was a big upset, but I don't think it's big enough to really like start thinking about them taking the W against Firefight as well. Yeah, I would not be surprised if we saw Oreo Fleet take the win over Ragnarok Fenrir and ruin mm-hmm. all of our predictions, except Navinos. Um, I did get Ofa o- Map 5 because Ofa had been really good at map- getting to Map 5 so far in Stage Number 2, which I don't think, and the- Yeti said, I don't think any of us predicted that since Ofa wasn't originally supposed to be here. But I, 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 now I they've been just, really showing themselves. I just want to say this about predicting Trick Twitter real quick, because this is kind of in vain with like what Yeti said on the cast tonight. If y'all are really upset about comments we make about whether someone is good or not don't watch uh, mm-hmm. and also frankly if you're if you're worried about me calling someone good or uh, apathy calling someone good that we know on a team you're in the elon pool get out of the elon pool before you start like taking shots at other people please mm-hmm. sorry moving yeah. on no no worries that that is justified like don't don't be if you're not gonna show up then don't uh, then don't speak up a storm so that, that's the best point I can give but it's gonna be interesting to see how these teams uh, bring it out here but now we're moving on to Discord Indigo A here Apathy take it away all right our first match we've got Renegades versus Quaka Queens Bowsy with a big upset for Renegades but uh, Navino and I go in Quaka with a, a potential. I don't want to call it a pity map. I think it'll be a two CP though <laughs> for Renegades. Wow. Okay. Um, I mean, then... I think I have both played uh, QQ and I and I've played Renegades, and I think just have to do that. Sorry, I have to keep going. My bad. No, you're good. The second match is uh, Joey Esports versus Space Created. It's it's a daunting task for Space Created. We've all got four O's for Joey Esports. Um, just not quite space created stage. They couldn't hit their stride, and then you know you got to play two incredibly good teams like Quaka and Joey back to back. Just going to be tough for them, but I think you know you can take what you can learn from here. You know, yeah. The only case I see space created taking a map off of Joey Esports is if Navino plays DPS again, like he did in stage number one when he ruined <laughs> that prediction. 
Hey, look, man. Look, I Asdo wanted to do some trolling, okay? <laughs> then tell Asdo to not do trolling for your Preds, my Preds, and Apathy's Preds, and probably a lot of other people's Preds. Yeah, Joseph is definitely known for always putting their best roster forward with all of their players at every match. Yeah, no one look at the match last week. <laughs> I literally ran out of space. I had a 10-man roster and only five people showed up to the game. Like, And then uh, one of them left halfway through and I had to find a ringer for two maps and I was like, oh my god. Uh, yeah, you can count on Joey to win, but you can't count on their map scores. Isn't that just the, isn't that just the case for all marsupial org at this rate? Nah, QQ pretty much either loses three one or wins three one. It's pretty yeah. consistent with them. It is very funny. <laughs> they either lose three one or win three one or three zero, I guess, in the case of space Korean. But you know, we'll take two CP is basically lost. All right, fair enough. Well, speaking speaking of three ones across the board, or a lot of three ones heading into Discord Indigo, be our first matchup is Domination versus Frost Surge. And, and Navino and Apathy have a 3-1 to one victory in favor of Domination. I have a 3-2. I think Frost Surge are awakening, and Domination have looked a little shaky, especially after losing to Rampaging Inferno, which, speak of the devil, or of the bull, forgot to change the logo on the right, I apologize, but Rampaging Inferno versus Hammerhead, I can change that logo up in a second here real quick, brought that second match, Rampaging Inferno versus Hammerhead. Uh, I have a 3-1 to one victory, so does Navino, and Apathy has a 4-0 to zero victory in favor of Rampaging Inferno, which definitely have wake, woken up this stage. Yeah, it is worth noting that they are going to have to... Do they need a ringer? No, they have a seven-man roster. Mm -hmm. but they are going to be without their new carry DPS, Marco, for this week. Um, but that being said, I, I, I still count on them to win. I don't think they're going to... I don't think uh, Hammerhead's going to be able to pull off the upset this week. Yeah, like, I love Hammerhead, but Rampaging Inferno have looked like a bull that's unstoppable right now. And I feel like that's going to be... It's going to be interesting to see if what Hammerhead does against it uh, and how they're going to be able to respond here. But now we're going to be moving over to the Discord Elimination Bracket. Worth noting, Storybook Heroes get a buy this week, so they are not going to be listed here in the Elimination Bracket. Navino, take it away with the other three matches in Elimination. The uh, only one with three. Okay, hey, hey, hey. Uh, I'm going to... So, first we have Poseidon versus Inferno Foxes. Uh, we all have Inferno Foxes winning. I think they've improved a lot. Poseidon... Like, I have a map five. I, I, I kind of gave that because I haven't really seen Inferno play since stage one. And, like, stage one, they were by far the worst team in our st in our group. Uh, but they've improved a lot. They've won their games. They've done what they need It's also to. probably the hardest group in Discord, too. Pro I mean... Yeah, I guess it was us, Fenrir, Inferno, Spuds. Okay, yeah, fair. Yeah, um, <laughs> the group of death. Mm -hmm. uh, then next we got all F four versus Monarch. Uh, we all have all F four winning three to one. All F four, you know, at one point we thought was going to be good, but Thug brought us back to Earth. Thug showed us the truth, showed us the light. Uh, but I still think they'd be Monarch. It's hard to find a positive mm -hmm. for Monarch right now, unfortunately. I'd love to find a positive for them, but. I'm all, uh, then we have Rift for Regicide. I'm actually surprised that Rift is down here because I thought they were pretty solid. Um, and is Rift 1-1 one one or 0-2 oh or 1? They are 0-2, oh no. so they cannot make the playoffs. Yeah, that's so weird to me, especially with how they played, like, Rampage and Inferno close. They pl they took maps off Spuds. They took maps off a lot. And then, I'll be fair, everyone took a map off Spuds. But, like... Well, yeah. I'll, get, I'll get it to you when you talk about this. Um, so I'm not really sure what's up. Hmm. Oh, they forfeited both of them? Yes. <laughs> Dang Rift it, my match is so wrong. <laughs> Rifts have forfeited both of their matches. Regicide forfeited their match last week. That is why Rift is down here, and that is why they are 0 2, unfortunately. So. There's no way to predict them both forfeiting. Which is what I would have done. Listen, <laughs> as much as I would have loved to do that, someone has to come out a winner, and we're just going to hope Regicide starts up a lobby. game of chicken to see which one declares the Rift? Rift first. Yeah. <laughs> which one sets up the lobby first? <laughs> yeah. I mean, also, it could be that no one cares about who wins since they both can't make playoffs. Mm -hmm. Again, yeah, it could be that. It also could be that we already know all our predictions are dead after last week, so we're just, we're just, we're just along for the ride right now. 
But yeah, it's going to be interesting, especially to see. I'm scared Inferno. to see my scores after that week. <laughs> it's going to be interesting, especially the Monarch versus Delta Four game, because this game determines who goes on in the playoffs. There are already three teams Ooh. locked in the playoffs in Discord tier: Storybook, Poseidon, and Inferno Foxes. All are two and zero right now because of the way the bracket was set up. Monarch and Alt F4. Wait, I thought are, Storybook was. Are they in an Elim game? Yes, they they won two. They are two and zero. They have a bye this week. They won against Alt F4 and. Oh, they're not Monarch. Okay. They're not Monarch. There's they seven won against, teams for Discord tier. Yeah, I forget who else they won against, but they did win against another team. Uh, it must have been like Reg Reggie. Reggie said. It was Reggie. Yeah, it was Reggie. No, but they yeah. won versus Monarch last week. They won against Monarch in the stage number one. In stage two, they won against Reggie side and Alt F4. I trust yeah. the notebook. I have. I take tracks. I take note of everything I can. You and trust I remember the, the young heroes. adult romance movie? No. <laughs> I've Not never that seen type it. of notebook, Navino. <laughs> I'm gonna move on to transcendence here before <laughs> this all goes off the rails. <laughs> Apathy, take it away. All right, we got our first matchup in transcendence tier Orum A. Gonna be <laughs> potentially spicy one. We got Epizuxis versus Devil Dukes. Um. I am, for one, glad that I predicted at least the same results as Navino going with the Devil Dukes, because I feel like you should be, hopefully, the one who gets this match correct. Uh, Marsu, you know it. Jason, as people say. <laughs> yeah. You got it. You got it, map five. Bowsy's got it, map five, going for the way of Epizuxis. Uh, I've never... I've. I've warm-up scrimmed both of these teams, which doesn't really count as a scrim. Oh, yes, they've told me about it. Um, and <laughs> that was why I went with Devil Dukes. I think they're definitely the top two teams in Trance, having played them both. Uh, I just I feel like Devil Dukes might take it, and I don't know what the uh, if the reschedule has any like player impacts or if the reschedule is if they played on Wednesday. Play at full strength. Yeah, if they played on Wednesday, we wouldn't have Dizzy. So we're playing Sunday, and everyone should have everyone for Sunday. Everyone has everyone. Nice. Should. 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 Fingers Looking crossed. at you, Golo. Because <laughs> Golo doesn't like to respond to anyone. Gotcha. The other match we've got there is uh, Zeus versus... Arcadia. Uh, Atlas Arcadia. I almost said Reckless, reckless Arcadia. Arcadia not it Atlas is Reckless Arcadia. Arcadia. Yeah, it's Reckless now. Yeah, it used to be That's Atlas. what threw me off. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It, it, they were like Atlas back in like season six. Yeah. Like in that. season seven, yes. Was it yeah. season seven too? I, yes. I thought they were Reckless last season too almost. No, they just joined the Reckless Org this season. But yeah, all of us going with uh, Reckless Arcadia for a win. They, they've been they've looked like a strong team. This is just an incredibly tough pool with both of these uh, top marsupial teams in it. Uh, I'm hoping Dragon can carry Zeus to one map, but unfortunately, I don't think they're going to be able to take the series here. Yeah, definitely. It'll be interesting to see how that map goes up. I'm very excited for Epizuxus versus Devil Dukes because these are the two, these are the top two teams all season. Now, finally duking it out to decide who's better. And it's going to be a barn burner of a match. Dukes I, or Zooks. I wish this was the feature match for Transcendence here this week. But the other, but Zeus versus Arcadia is instead. So it's going to be interesting to see how Epizuxus versus Devil Dukes pan out. But now we move over to Transcendence Aurum B. I'm just making sure. Yep, okay. Starting off with our first match, which is Vengeance versus Maelstrom. Currently, Maelstrom are in the show up to match challenge. Uh, so we all have Vengeance winning 4 to 0 for that. And our second match is the more interesting one. It's Billings Boomers versus Uzumaki. I have Uzumaki winning 3 to 1, but Navino thinks it's going to be a map 5 in favor of Billings. And Apathy thinks Billings is going to win by only giving Uzumaki a single map which is interesting to say the least. I'm very interested to see how this match goes down because this is really the bat matchup of Transcendence RMB. No offense yeah. to the other teams, but these two teams have been the strongest thus far in this tier. I do kind of want to change it um, because the Billing Boomers just dropped uh, Kizzle. So I think I'd like to change it to a 4-0 for Biz Billing Boomers. Uh, going in okay. a different direction. I said <laughs> uh, the reason I said boomers is because like the changes they made I think are positive. Um, oh, you can do that Sempra. live. Let's go. Huh? No, got rid of Sempra. <laughs> yeah, I mean Sempra is gone, Mushroom's gone. Like, and they both had their positives. It was just it wasn't working, and especially after the Carnage game, I think the pop changes they made have been positive. You know, and Vengeance took them out, and uh, Vengeance also made the changes. And that's if Maelstrom was actually going to play a game because I think they have to every time. 
Except once, when this was their feature. Yeah, and they lost 4-0 that game. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, like, I just think Boomers can take it, and they've looked okay, at, uh, and I think their new additions do well. And uh, Chrome is a really good player that got added, uh, who some people in the community might know from other tournaments, uh, and I think they'll do pretty well. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see. I'm interested to see how Billings Boomers do. I'm not discrediting them whatsoever. I've just put Uzumaki in front of them because Billings Boomers have not had a challenge since Carnage, and they lost to Carnage. So it's going to be interesting to see how they do against Uzumaki because this is basically Billings' second challenge in Tranquility. But now moving on from Discord or, or Transcendence RMB, excuse me, heading over to Transcendence Indigo A. Navino, take it away. Oh, yeah. Indigo A, we got Battalion versus Insidious. I have a 4 0. Apathy has a 4 0. Bowsy has a 3 1. Uh, this is my faith in Battalion to shut out a match they should and not do a decap and play down. Uh, <laughs> or in some cases, decap plays up. I've already talked about that in the podcast. Uh, so I, I trust. Um, then we have decap versus Carnage. Bowsy has a 2 1 to stay within theme. <laughs> uh, for decaps. Uh, and then I have a 3-1, and Bapathy has a 4-0. I still think they'll play down to Carnage a bit. If they don't 4-0, I'm going to be kind of kind of be like, guys, come on, please, <laughs> please. Uh, so they played down or up PDK. So, like, versus y'all, I think they played up, but versus Insidious, they played down. <laughs> Fair enough. It'll be interesting to see. And also, yes, I am on that. I am on that train of give Andy heart attacks on the side of decap. So <laughs> it'll be interesting to see how they take on Carnage, how they're going to be able to do it. I just put in the 2-1 uh, because I wanted to get that safekeeping to try and get those three points. I do believe decap can do better than that. they just been doing 2-1 this entire stage and that's that's kind of why i did this so it'll be interesting maybe that that i actually predict that score they won't actually put that score out probably probably will be the case at this point moving on to transcendence indigo b apathy take it away all right our first match here is going to be the battle of the trash animals we've got <laughs> reckless sigma versus throwing your bat i can't believe i just noticed that I just noticed um, it too. Yeah, all of us going for Reckless Sigma. I think they're they're another they're another good example of the a raccoon team that's... wants to take the trash can back as our home. True. I think uh, <laughs> Reckless. You know that org is great, and this is another example of a team kind of hitting their stride at the right time. Um, so, as much as I hate to say it, I think they're going to take this match versus throwing your bad. Our second match here is going to be Meraki versus Puerto Rico. Um, this one was a bit tougher because I think Meraki has had to forfeit even a couple games in stage two. Or am I thinking of a different Both games, team? I'm pretty sure they have forfeited. Gotcha. Well, I'm hoping they show up to this one because uh, I think Puerto Rico is definitely a beatable team if they can get their roster together. Yeah, definitely. I Again, I went for the win for Puerto Rico because for a safe haven, just in case. It's always mm -hmm. good to have that backup fund there. Um, I'm just yeah. not sure at this point. <laughs> because Listen, both... I don't blame you. Puerto Rico are the Mad Five Kings, and I'm pretty sure these two teams face off in the preseason, and that was the exact result. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, Puerto Rico can only win in Mad Five, as we've seen. <laughs> they not all the time. They have won maps without going to, matches without going to Mad Five. Which one, I thought they've only won like one game. I'd have to check my Google. I'd have to check my. Oh, you're bad. No, uh, or someone else. Uh, Puerto Rico. I can check. Pretty sure they only won like here. one game. Uh, they won against Kent State week one of uh, three to one. So that wasn't a map five. Uh, yeah. Oh, Kent State. Wins. I forgot about Kent State. Yeah, the rest okay. of their wins, all one of them, have been in map five. Uh, so I called them 50, the map five. I'm fifty games. fifty. I'm fifty fifty. Yeah, fifty fifty. Not not terrible. Doesn't get yeah. you wins, but still, but still not terrible. But. All that aside, it's going to be interesting to see how these matches pan out. Now it's time to go to our Transcendence Elimination Bracket to close out all our predictions. Starting off with Danger Close versus Fahrenheit 214. Navino and Apathy think it's going to be a 3-1 to one victory for Fahrenheit, but I'm pulling for Danger Close to get a full sweep over Fahrenheit because uh, Fahrenheit forfeited last week. Or at least they've, they? they've, had, they've had roster issues from what I've heard. They didn't forfeit mm -hmm. last week, but... They ended up losing a rat society, and that was kind of challenging. 
It's gonna be yeah, because they, like, they beat Zeus at the end of stage one, and I really thought yes. they were going to make a run in stage. That's why I was. They did. They did win against Swarm as well. Yeah, they did win against Swarm Hornets, but then yesterday they went to a last week. They went to a map five against Rat Society and Uh, lost. So man, my preds are so messed up, bro. All of ours were. Get ready for the standings after this. But Uh, what's the highest score this week? Tell me that. Um, I can tell you at least. Is it below fifty? It is yes, it's below fifty. Oh my! Really? Yes, it is below (laughs) fifty. That has to be the lowest (laughs) week. Oh this was the God. this was the worst week according to Boo. But to close out our ranking, our close out our predictions here, our final match is Swarm Hearts versus Rat Society. I have a three-one in favor of Rat Society. I know they're gonna mess it up because every time I predict Rat Society, they always lose. But Davino also has a map five situation in favor of Rat Society, and Apathy I thinks it's gonna know, be a full sweep for Rat Society. Definitely gonna be interesting to tre- see Transcendence Cheer uh, bring out here. It's gonna be interesting to see how these matches go out here. No comments from you two after all the other times. No, I think I think rats are. They're, when they when they play, they can be pretty good. It seems like sometimes they don't always play up to that full potential, but I'm gonna trust in them for this week. Yeah, definitely, it's gonna be interesting. But that is it. That is every single match happening in Tranquility Gaming this week. Gonna be interesting to see how these go out. Again, it's the final match of the regular season. Playoff seating is on the line here so everything can go out as i just stall out for a little bit of time while i get the standings uh sorted out so now i can jump over to this scene and show you the top 500 the top five top not 500 there were not 500 entries top five content creation team scores for week number five again i told you already how low the points were heading into this week less than 50 was the max in fifth place is myself with 38 points Take a note of how low that number is to start for the content creation team. In fourth place, our fellow Apathy with 40 points. Wow, these are low scores. In third place is Navino with 44 points. In second place, (laughs) in second place, I I constantly critiqued her last week. Somehow Nagisa ended up second place this week. (laughs) I should learn to never criticize anybody ever again on their predictions. But unfortunately, you know what that means. First place this week. I don't even need to say it. It's PDK. It's PDK. Yeah. Wow. 40, 49 points, one point over Nagisa. I, I, the fact I got third with having such a bad week is wild. Yeah. Trust me. It's going to get even weirder. Uh, heading over to our week scores. I totally forgot to update the number on this, and I have just realized it. I'm good at uh, production, guys. Let me change that <laughs> real quick. We're heading into week number eight. There we go. So, heading into our week number eight top scores in fifth place, or should I say fourth place, because we had a tie for fourth place. Cry Navino got 44 points each. In nice. third place this week was Chobi with 47 points. Is that their in, first appearance? That is yeah, Chobi's that is, first yeah. appearance on the top five for the week. Nice. In second place is Nagisa with 48, which means PDK won the week as well. There's a reason I said the prediction offices were fire. We're on fire on the on the on the on the. Yeah, uh, it was a bad week, man. It was dumb. It was a terrible week, very terrible. And now we finally head over to our final group, which is the top five community member scores of all time. In fifth place is myself with 372 points, making myself putting myself back on the grid. In fourth place is Toxic with 388 points. Did I fall off? In third place is Toxic, or not Toxic, Cry, with 389 points. Can you tell I'm tired? It is 11.30. I have an 8 o'clock class tomorrow. (laughs) In second place is Davino with 390 points. Oh, wow. I, I, I moved up. I thought I yeah. dropped out. I honestly thought this week I would drop out of the top five. Yeah, you did better than you did better than Toxic, so that kind of got you that little bit of advantage. Yeah. But unfortunately, that means PDK is still in first with 413 points. Wow, he's so far ahead. Of he is so far ahead. Again, I stated, unless this guy blows the playoffs, he has won this year, or he's won this season of predicting tranquility. It's it's not even, and it's not even close. Like it definitely has like the gap and the gap has shortened. But still, like, you can tell that PDK still has that dominance. But that is it. That is everything that we cover here on the show. Any last word from our analysts before we get into the feature matches that you should watch for this week? I mean, good luck with both matches and predictions. It's going to be a tough one. 
Yeah. Yeah. A lot of big matches this week. Yeah, definitely. Let's see how people do with their backs against the wall. Mm-hmm. Our back, our backs are in the wall at this point, considering how much <laughs> how much we've been doing here here with these predictions. Couple quick notes before I get into our feature match of the week. Next week, of course, we are not going to be having predicting tranquility because. We're going to be hosting a collaboration with the Iris Podcast. Tune into the Iris Podcast next week for Bracketology, our mega cast, where we predict every single playoffs match this season. You do not want to miss it. I will be there. Mr. Yeti will be there. And we'll also have some extra analysts there, of which will be released at a future date or when Bracketology airs live. You do not want to miss it. As for our matches of the week, uh, you do not want to miss these matches. Tuesday, we have Squall versus Geometric at 8.30 Eastern Standard Time. Wednesday, we have our Harmony tier, our Harmony EU match, A10 Esport versus Orthus at 8.30 Central European Time. That's 2.30 Eastern Standard Time. Later that day, we have our Transcendence match, Zeus versus Reckless Arcadia, 9.30 Eastern Standard Time. Thursday, Domination versus Frost Surge is the current match on the docket. That is subject to change, but we are trying to get a Discord tier feature match for 8.30 Eastern Standard Time on Thursday with the beat drop falling after that. Also a note, predicting tranquility. Obviously, with the regular season ending here, there might be a little bit of mishap. There might not be as much predicting tranquility broadcast as usual. We're heading into the playoffs. It's a lot more chaotic. Might be a lot more long coverage on the Iris podcast, and therefore we may not have the chance to host Predicting Tranquility. I will still be posting the standings as much as possible in the Discord in the Tranquility Gaming Discord server, so you know what the standings are for the week. Maybe not the content creation team member scores, but at least the weekly scores will be posted in the Tranquility Gaming Discord server as soon as I get them. Because Boof obviously is a busy man. He doesn't have all the time to do that. And he's the one who sets up all the scores for that. So make sure you stay tuned to the Tranquility Gaming Discord to see what the scores are every single week. But that is going to do it here for our show here. Thank you all for watching. For Apathy and Navino, who have been constantly in the Twitch chat this entire time, uh, <laughs> thank you guys at least for monitoring the chaos and making sure nothing went entirely off the rails and we got demonetized on Twitch. But thank you all for coming. Thank you two for coming with me. My name has been Bowsy. We thank you all for watching. Until we meet again, we hope you have an amazing night.